video and today's video is gonna be more of a lax video kind of something just to have some good conversation chill a little bit so I thought that we should do a video that I've seen on YouTube basically girlfriends wives asking questions to their significant other that other wives and girlfriends are generally afraid to ask I'm curious on what the questions are <laughs> So I think that our relationship, we are pretty open. At least I am. I don't think I have a lot of resistance, a lot of, I don't really hold much weight <laughs> when it comes to. <laughs> no, when you, you want to say something, you pretty much say it. <laughs> it don't really matter what it is. So I just kind of took some questions that I probably would want to know if I was afraid to ask questions or also some of other videos I kind of took a couple of their questions so I just thought we should start with this we have a little sippy sip of some drinks I have some like uh, pineapple lemonade came in jacks in the can that's underrated try to find it in the store it's gonna be difficult yeah it's gonna be difficult <laughs> but that is pretty good okay so I'm gonna just go ahead and scroll with the question that I seen. So let's start there. So some questions are gonna be like a general of men and some questions are gonna be like directly. I think you'll kind of know how to answer. And then can you let them know if it's from a girlfriend's point of view or a wife's point of view? I, I don't, yeah, it's kind of both. It's, it's both. Kinda, yeah, okay. it's kind of in general. Okay, so I'm gonna see how I can rephrase this question because the way it was at Bridget was kind of funky. Uh. So before getting married, what was the expectations you had for me as a wife? The expectations I had for you were... Or it could be in general too, what do you think? I, I yeah, just, expectations just in are. general, I, I just expected, you know, the fun to continue and just kind of grow and expand on what we already had. So do you do you think that guys have the expectations of, okay, now that I get married, she needs to cook, she needs to clean, she needs to be like this, she needs to make sure I'm always having sex? I think it depends on the relationship and how long you've been together with the person before you got married. Mm -hmm. So if I've been together, for example, we were together five years before we got married, mm -hmm. I'm pretty much expecting the same thing that I've had for uh, those five years. I'm not expecting you to be different. Mm -hmm. So if, if within those five years you never cook, I'm not expecting you to flip the switch and all of a sudden you, you're a cook now. That's very wise. Men don't think like that though. <laughs> <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> Next question. Why do men always have their hands in their pants? I don't know, I never thought about that before. So I <laughs> but I can Why tell you I can tell you one thing. What they be doing? I can tell you one thing. Um, it depends on what kind of pants we wear, so if it's shorts or jeans. But a lot of times our balls be getting stuck to the side of our thighs. <laughs> and if it's real hot outside, it's humid, like Florida or something like that, it happens all the time. And you just kinda kinda get in there and kinda shift it around <laughs> so you get comfortable. You know what I find? I find that guys tend to pop. Sorry. This is why you can't drink them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what I usually find is that guys tend to always have their hands in their pants while they sleep. What's the excuse now? It always one hand on their stomach and the other one in their pants. We talking about boxers or pants because I don't wear pants when I sleep. First of all, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> if you fall asleep on the couch, 
Your head's always in your pants. I don't know, it just comes natural. I don't think about why I do it. It just feels good to just hang on to your balls. I think we used to touching ourselves down there, so I mean, it's probably a coping thing. Like a, like a kid holding a teddy bear? Just... Some, something like that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Having a finger, favorite blankie. <laughs> it helps us get comfortable, you know. Do periods gross you out? And if a guy finds it gross, do you think it's immature? In the beginning, yeah, it kind of grossed me out. But now I'm older, it's kind of like a annoying type of thing. But I just, I just know it's there. So it, I don't get grossed out by it anymore. I just kind of, you know. It's kind of whatever. How we gonna work around this or deal with it? Like I run in tampons all the time, and it don't bother me no more. So I remember in the beginning it used to be like, can you put like your tampon box behind in the back? Like, <laughs> can you put it in the back of the cabinet? But I think that was more so just because the tampon box is so big, it takes up so much space. It's like, <laughs> all right, can you just put that back there because it's like. Mess up my whole feng shui right now. <laughs> Do you think it's immature to think that it's gross? Probably don't know that much about it. You probably haven't been around it a lot. So it's gross to you. It's blood. It's coming out. Ugh. But if I say it So I think it, the more experienced you are, the, the, the less you think of it as nasty. Next question. Do men always masturbate when a girl leaves? When a girl leaves, mm -hmm. probably. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say always, but you know, there's definitely them times when you know she says she's gonna be gone if to the stove. <laughs> <laughs> so like, and then if the man know, he probably ain't gonna get none that night or the next day or whatever. It's, you gotta get it in where you can. What do you think the percentile that men generally masturbate while when they're with, alone? With, when yeah, when the girl's gone. How about seventy percent of the time? So it's so it's safe to say it's likely that the girl leaves. He probably gonna masturbate. Probably. Is blue balls a real thing? Blue balls is real. I think it feels different for every guy though. Okay. So for some guys, it can feel like a whole, a real painful, like clam up type of situation. And for other guys, it can feel like that feeling of when you have to hold your pee back. But overall, your penis is feeling disappointed. I say blue balls is different for every guy, but it's definitely not like a, a, a general, like I'm gonna be in pain. I got blue balls for everybody. Cause I used to hear that back before you. Mm -hmm. For me. Me, I just feel like I got pee. But I'm gonna tell you, I got blue balls because you know, I'm trying to <laughs> I gotta, I gotta get this out. When going number two, <laughs> <laughs> do you guys hold their penis or do they let it like hang, hang and touch the ball? Everybody don't touch the ball. Hmm. Most of the times, you know, sit on the rim. <laughs> so it just yeah. <laughs> so when you go poo, you just lay it on the room? Pretty much. <laughs> That's what I <laughs> Otherwise, it'll, it'll touch underneath the rim That's and then gross. that's not comfortable, so. Have you ever touched the bowl while? Is that gross feeling? You gotta clean up after that. I probably need a whole bath after that. <laughs> like, look, Bring your own baby wipes. There's some guys out there touching the bowl on you and then you over here giving head. Bring your listen, own baby wipes listen, and your own rag. Y'all make sure y'all just, Don't free especially in the beginning, I used to always force you to take a shower before doing anything. Yeah, I was a little, you know, out of the game, I guess you could say. <laughs> yeah, he's like, come on, let's be spontaneous. But now, nah. but now I take a shower and just let you know, hey, I'm ready to do something. <laughs> hey, I'm up in, let's, let's, hey, man, we please, man, come on. In general, do guys think the vagina is actually pretty? I don't think most guys judge a vagina by what it looks like. Well, they be like, oh, that thing fat. Yeah, but that don't say pretty or not to us. It just means it's 
Classy. Bigger. We don't think about pretty, whether it looks pretty or not. We don't. Do you think a vagina is pretty? I can, I can, I can, I can picture an ugly one. <laughs> So uh, a ugly one is just like where it just looks like it's been, you know, mangled and the the, the lips just look like all kind of out of sorts and hanging. And so in general, I guess. <laughs> and then like I guess you could say a pretty one that looks like two hamburger buns. <laughs> Do you think children negatively affect a relationship? They can if you allow them to. When you have kids, a lot of things change and your energy level changes. A lot of your energy goes to the kid. So it can have a negative effect if that's your only focus and you forget about everything else. So you just have to find a place of balance. This is kind of a side question because that got me thinking because I watched a, a, a video last night actually with this guy had made a comment about him believing that the wife comes before the kids and then so on and so forth. So do you think kids should come first or marriage or your spouse? I think marriage and your spouse should come first because that's the vow that you made before God when you got married. So it should always be a partnership between you and your spouse. You come to agreements and then the kids come into play. Um, and this helps with your relationship when you know that your spouse is number one and they know that they're number one to you. I agree. I think that if us as a couple are on the same page and we are healthy in our relationship and we're being healthy examples for our kids, then we're able to be healthy parents and we're even better parents that in a lot of ways we will automatically pay even more attention to our kids but when you're not on one page something falls off one parent falls off energy falls off you know and it affects the kids so i do think by putting each other first which is like you said something we vow before god by doing that it will automatically align yourself with your kids and one thing i think that was beautiful that this guy said he was like um i think i just forgot <laughs> i'm gonna say it though i know i just under pressure it's so easy when you become parents to fall back on your relationship and i'm guilty of it too a lot of times i put all my attention on the kids and sometimes i have to remind myself that he is here and he's my husband and not to put all my attention on the kids so yeah, but like I was trying to say, the guy said that it kind of creates an unhealthy example if you always drop everything and do everything for your kids. Because as your kids start to learn things by your actions and the things that you do, it kind of teaches them to feel like they are entitled. Yeah. Because everything is them first and then you. So it teaches them to kind of almost be selfish. But moving on, what do you think that causes a man to become comfortable in a relationship? Like too comfortable. Too comfortable? Yeah. A man becomes too comfortable in a relationship when he's not challenged. But there's a lot of things that you gotta make decisions on and have opinions on. And if you're always giving your opinion and making decisions and there's never any pushback, I'm comfortable. I know what I got. I know what I'm going to get. So I'm just going to continue to have my same opinion, my same decision making process because it's right. It's not being challenged. Right. So. That's a good response. That's some sick stuff you just said. Uh oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead bro. Okay. Do you think it's healthy to be comfortable in a relationship? I don't think it's healthy, but I think you should ever feel 100% comfortable. So you should always feel like there's some type of challenge or there's some type of improvement that I need to make or there's some area where I may be lacking where it can benefit my partner if I make this change. So I think you should always be having a sense that you're not perfect. Should you ever tell your partner no? Yes. That goes back to what I just said before. <laughs> if you never tell your first partner no, they're gonna think that everything they do is right. So 
Where's the challenge in that? Guys chase. If you have someone that always says yes and there's no chase, then you start to take it for granted. What about when it comes down to sex? When it comes to sex, I would like to say. <laughs> yeah, I would like to say, you know, <laughs> there should never be no with sex, but you know, I guess I gotta be realistic with that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you're not feeling it, then say no. <laughs> He's so depressed about that. Stop. That's the uh, politically correct answer. What do you think is the most ultimate like thing that causes people to end up in divorce? Selfishness. I think when you're selfish, you start to only think about what this relationship can do for me and I need to change my partner to do this and that to make me feel better about some insecurities that I may have that I'm not dealing with properly. So I'm going to change their life and the person that they are to appease me so that I feel better. Most of the time, if a partner really loves you, they will make those changes, but are they happy at the end of the day? So they'll get to a point where they start to realize like, damn, I'm doing this, that, uh, all these things I'm doing for you, what are you doing for me? Mm. And when they come to that realization, then it's like, okay, maybe what we have is not what I thought we had, and I gotta find someone who is for me. I feel like there's a lot of social influences that causes divorces. Like, I think unintentionally, the way that society tends to think nowadays, like, you don't take no mess. You don't do this, you don't do that. If he's doing this, you need to automatically like leave him. And I think having the mentality of don't accept no BS tend to get in people's head about what they accept too. Mm -hmm. I, I think what you said is predominantly it, but I do think unintentionally, there's a lot of social influence that causes a lot of people to divorce a lot quickly than what our parents' parents, which is, I don't think it's correct. I don't, I think you should do what makes you happy at the end of the day. Should you stay in a relationship for the sake of the child? No. Get the hell out of that relationship, okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, um, because at the end of the day, the child's gonna see that it's not a healthy relationship and it's not gonna be a healthy thing for them to see. Just staying in a relationship for five, 10 years, and you know the relationship is dead, but you're just staying there for the kids, I don't think it's healthy for anybody. Mm -hmm. You're wasting time if you stay in a relationship that's dead just because of the kid. Should you ever be comfortable enough to tell your partner they stink now? I was about to say, I was about to, I was about to think that you said, should you ever be comfortable enough to fart in front of your partner? But. You know what, that was one of my questions, <laughs> but I wasn't going to ask it because, you know what I'm saying. Uh, Even though I think you should be comfortable enough to fart. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, you stay down there, so we talking about the vagina? Okay, or we yeah. talking about the male parts? I mean, no, I'm saying both should gooch. either or. Just, <laughs> if you going down there. Yeah. Or just, just in changing. Should, the partner should be like. I think they should tell, you should tell your partner, just be careful with how you tell them. So don't do it in a condescending way where you're hurting someone's feelings, but just be, you know, listen, I want to do this. I want to, you know, please you or whatever, but I don't know if you know or if you smell this, but this is what it smells like. And I think if we take a shower or something like that, we'll be all good. Absolutely not. Do <laughs> not say that. Do not listen to David. You better not what? say it like that. What? That is awful. That sounded good to me. No, that is awful. You like it. You kind of stink down there. I don't think you really understand what you smell like, but maybe if you take a bath, like, don't. don't we talking do that. about a consistent smell or are we no, talking about just. It don't matter. Out of the blue. It don't matter. And what do you say to that answer? Like, if, if it's a situation like you smelt it, she'd be like, like, hey, is everything okay? Like, I just feel like, okay. I, I don't think that was much better than No, no, <laughs> no, but I do think, I definitely think you shouldn't be like, hey, I think you should go take a bath. 
I think it, it takes a certain level of comfortability to be able to tell your partner that they don't smell well. And perfect answer to that. Hey man, I'm gonna give you head, right? Just gotta take a shower or let's bathe together. That's a good at segue. End, at the end of the day, I know I'm gonna get what I want. I just gotta take a shower. We take a shower together and we good. Yeah, that's a good segue. What if they think after the shower? <laughs> when they think after the shower, you gotta have to ask yourself the question. <laughs> Do they know how to bathe? You know what? It's actually surprising. There's actually a lot of people that don't know how to correctly bathe, bathe themselves. Who's ever taught you to bathe? I think that parents generally fall off at a certain age. And when the kids become a teenager, they don't never revisit that conversation of cleanliness. Yeah. Because they're a teenager. They feel like it's off limits now. It's awkward. I hope this conversation now <laughs> touches me when I when our girls is like 12, 13 or whatever to revisit this conversation about because no one ever taught me and it took actual partners to mm -hmm. teach me that hey you might not be all we were all the way there right now and I'm like okay I'm gonna make sure I am there but yeah I think it overall is important to communicate to communicate so yeah I thought this is a cool little cute little video to start off with you know what I'm saying so if you want us to do more videos like this just let us know comment down below if there's some things that you would or would not do go ahead and comment that down below as well but give us a thumbs up if you like this video yeah subscribe if you haven't already we go ahead and get out of here we love you guys and we'll see you in the next one peace peace